Fave icons are an important part of how we represent our websites and apps, and it's especially important if somebody's in a sea of tabs only to struggle to find which site is yours when they want to go back. Now, modern tools make this pretty easy, like Next.js, where all I have to do is drop my fave icon into the app directory. But once we have that fave icon, we have to start to think about the different conditions that somebody is in, such as maybe they're in dark mode. So if I toggle my theme here, we can see that since I have a black background, we can still see my little SJ here. But how about on my other icon, where now it's black and it's really hard to see, so that's not really going to stand up and make it very usable. So we're going to see how we can actually toggle the different colors of an icon by using SVG fave icons. And we're going to even see if you notice there how it changed when we're going back and forth, depending on if that tab is active. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I have an upcoming course where we're going to build a full stack Next.js app complete with authentication, database management, and we're even going to accept payments. So make sure to sign up to get exclusive access and updates using the link below at spacejelly.dev slash Next.js. So digging into my app, we can see that I'm starting off with that standard Vercel icon that you get out of the box with Next.js. Now, of course, you don't need to use Next.js for this. That's just what I'm using for this example, as a fave icon is really just the web. So you can use this in any framework, whether it's Astro, Nux, Svelte, or really whatever it is. But starting from the top, we can see that if I go to this fave icon, this is just Next.js's way of being able to easily drop in a fave icon, and it's automatically going to serve that up for you. Now, just to quickly put something together, I'm going to grab this Lucid briefcase icon, where if I paste it in, I'm going to expand it up to the right size. We can see that this is probably good enough for purposes of seeing how this works. Now, the typical way that I handle this is I typically export these files as a ping. So let's call this fave icon 1024 by 1024. I'm going to save it in that public directory of my current application, where one of the best sites to use for fave icon generation is real fave icon generator, where we can see that if I go ahead and select my image, we can see that it's automatically going to generate a bunch of different variations based off of that file. So we can see here what it's going to look like on the different themes. We even get some customization options. We can see how it's going to look on iOS and all the different platforms. But ultimately what I want to do, we can even see that it's going to try to generate a, an SVG icon for me. But ultimately what I want to do is I want to generate my favorite icons and the HTML that goes along with that. So we can see after it takes a second here. It finally finished and I can download that package and we can also see that I get all this HTML that I can use to copy into my application. So I'm going to go ahead and first of all, copy all of that code. And generally speaking in Next.js, it's usually better to handle metadata using the metadata exported constant or a function. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this inside of the, the layout file just so we can see how this works. But we can see that I can copy all this in. I'm going to also go ahead and make sure that I self-close all these different tags. But we have all these different variations of what the icons look like for all those different devices that we saw get generated inside of that application. And at this point, I can go ahead and simply drag all these files into the public directory of my repo. And once it refreshes, we can see that we do now have that fave icon. Now we can see that even though I still have that fave icon in there from the Vercel icon, it's still going to show the ones that I placed inside the head, but I'm still going to go ahead and get rid of that just to make sure that I'm covering my bases and it just doesn't accidentally show up in some way. But here's the thing, while all these are really great options for how we can add all these different icons, we can add some additional tweaks to make things a little bit nicer. Now, Masa put together a pretty extensive guide for how you can make sure that you're setting up all your fave icons correctly based off of all the different quirks of the different browsers. Now we can see at the top here, this is pretty much all you need in order to have pretty good coverage for all the fave icons and app icons for your application. But we're going to focus on the top two here, the specifically the fave icon.ico, as well as this fave icon.svg, is ultimately we're going to be trying to target how we can use fave, SVG fave icons. Now, part of the reason we need to pay attention to this in the first place is because SVG fave icons don't have blanket support, particularly Safari has mixed results. We can see that there's some other operating systems and browsers that struggle to use the SVG icons. But generally speaking, we're going to want to have some kind of backup so that we always have some kind of icon showing. Now, if you're interested in what all these quirks are, I'll link to Masa's article in the description. The important thing, though, is I want to start using SVG for my icon so I can start to gain some of the benefits like the light and dark mode. Now, we can see the current icon that if I open up a new tab, we do have that white background. So if I toggle my appearance, we can see that I still have that white background and it is able to show and that works fine. But I want to get rid of that white background. I want to just show the briefcase icon itself. And as you can imagine, it's not going to look that great if it's only going to show that black line on top of a really dark browser. So nobody's going to be able to, going to, be able to see that very well. So starting off, the first thing I want to do is actually export this icon as an SVG file rather than the ping that I originally exported in. So I'm going to go ahead and just hide myself so I can see here that if I select the frame, 
I can go ahead and export this as an SVG instead. You wanna make sure that you get rid of the fill so that it's not showing in the export. But now if I start to export that frame, I'm gonna export it as favicon.svg. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy those two important lines at the top that I was talking about, the favicon ICO and the SVG. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace those existing lines that are inside there, as these are the only two that I actually need in order to get the support that I want. Now, once the app updates, we can already see that it's updated to just use those black lines instead of including the background. So we can see there that it's working perfectly for how I expected it to. Now, the tricky thing is if I head over to Safari and I do try to go to localhost, we can see that it does load a fave icon, but it loads it with this blue line. Well, the blue is coming from this mask icon that we configured when we set up the real fave icon generator, where we can see this Safari pinned tab, that SVG, where we're passing in this hex code, which is going to be that bluish color that we see inside of the pinned tab. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out for a second. And if I try to refresh the page, we can still see that it's there, which leads to another little quirk with Safari specifically where apparently Safari has a really hard time trying to refresh the cache of the fave icons. So what we can do is we can actually go to go and then go to folder or command shift uh, G and we can go to library Safari fave icon cache. And we can see that we have this fave icon cache. We have this template icons and we have the touch icons cache. And if we delete all those folders, that's going to manually delete all that cache for us. So now if I go ahead and quit Safari, open it back up, we can see that when we go to it, it does have the original looking icon. And if I zoom in here, we can see that it does still have that white background. Now, the reason that it's able to show this backup icon has a very important distinction. Where if we look inside of the code where we're actually defining these two different icons, we can see specifically we're setting the size of the ICO file to 48 by 48. And that's a bit of a quirk in itself is because the browser isn't looking for a 48 by 48 file. So because it's not looking for that, we can trick Chrome into not automatically using the ICO file instead of the SVG file. Now we can see why that would be a problem by removing the sizes, because if I head now back into Chrome, we can see that it doesn't show that SVG file anymore, where if I just simply add back those sizes, we can see that I now get that original SVG icon, which is just the lines or the SVG variant rather, so that it can show up exactly how I want. Now, again, if you wanna learn more about all those different quirks, definitely check out Moss's article that goes into depth about all these different things. But so far between Chrome and Safari, we have a good experience where Chrome is able to use that SVG icon as intended, and Safari is currently showing that fave icon as just that ICO file. Now, just to touch on this quickly, we could technically still support SVG icons in Safari, but we're not going to be able to get the same features for the light mode, dark mode. So it's not going to give as great of an experience. So that's why it's probably better to fall back to the ICO for this particular instance. But just know you do have that option if you want to provide the SVG as that masked icon. But back to the task at hand, I want to change this icon. So if I'm in dark mode, I want to show a dark mode friendly icon. So let's toggle our appearance here we can see that it's not very friendly in dark mode with that black color as the outline. Now, the cool thing about SVG is I can add a style tag directly inside of the embedded SVG file. So let's go ahead and add a style tag. I'm gonna go ahead and define a path and let's say color magenta. Now, the tricky thing here though, is if I go to all these different paths, I need to make sure that this color is going to represent the color that I want. So in, the, in this particular case, if I head over we can see that the color is currently being defined by the stroke attribute. So if I select both of these and I set it to current color instead of a defined black, we can see that when I refresh the page and it's important that you refresh the page, it's not going to automatically refresh like the application might. We can see that I now have that magenta icon. Now that in itself isn't necessarily that interesting because we could have easily just controlled that from the props itself. But what is interesting is now we can use media queries inside of the style tag. So I can say at media prefers color scheme dark and I can add a different path. Oops, path, let's say color green. If I refresh the page, we can see that it now turned to green and that's not the most accessible color for my fave icon here, but we can see the point that I was able to now change it to a different color. So probably doing this in a serious way, if my original color is going to be my light scheme color, let's make that black. And if my dark mode, maybe that's just going to simply be white. We can see that when it's in dark mode, it's going to be white. And if I toggle my appearance and you're going to need to refresh the page after you toggle that the appearance, we can see that it's now black. Now we can even get really creative with this. So say for instance, if I make this path one, this is going to be path one. And then I add a second for path two. Let's say magenta. 
magenta, or let's call this one red, and then make a path two of magenta. And if I then add my path ID path one, and then ID path two, we can see that in light mode, I have two different colors for both of those. And if I now toggle to my dark mode and refresh the page, we can see that I have two different colors because I was able to target both of them individually. Now, because we do have the power of CSS here, we can really do whatever we want for coloring these different strokes. So imagine if you have a really complex icon and you really want it to shine with the different colors, this is a good opportunity for being able to customize how you want exactly within those bounds. Now, this isn't only limited to those the colors of that icon itself. Maybe I do still want to have a background when it is in dark mode, but when it's in light mode, I just want to have those outlines kind of like we saw before. So if I just say, for instance, if I add a container here, and let's make the border radius really nice and low. I'm gonna go ahead and just, first of all, copy this as SVG. And to start, I'm gonna just simply replace all that code and let's just add it back again. And I'm gonna add my style tag. And this time, I'm just gonna target my rectangle here where let's say that the fill is going to be current color. If I say my color by default is going to be, let's actually make that white. Let's just make sure that this is working properly we can see that it is white. And if I toggle my appearance and then go to a different tab, we can see that it's still white. But again, I wanna hide that background whenever we're in light mode. So just like I did with media queries, what I can simply do is at media prefers color scheme, dark rectangle. And again, I want the color to be white when I am in dark mode, but I just wanna make that transparent when I'm not and refreshing it we can see that it's now removed from that background. But again, if I wanna support that background in dark mode, we can see that I'm able to easily do that. Now, as you can imagine, that opens up a lot of doors for how you're able to customize your fav icon by just having a little CSS inside of your SVG file. But earlier when I showed you before, I had this additional feature where if I navigate away from my tab, we can see that I have this inactive tab experience. Now this one's gonna be a little bit more involved because this is using JavaScript for this particular feature, but it's still another cool technique that we can use to dynamically update our fav icon. Now for this one, I wanna have a new fav icon for my inactive one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to maybe a medium gray so that it works for both because I am i don't wanna have to worry about the specific color scheme. I just wanna make sure that people can see that this is inactive. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this one as well and making sure that I don't include the background on this. So let's call this fav icon inactive. And just to generally make sure that this is working, I'm gonna say favicon inactive.svg, and we can see that my favicon was updated to that gray. But of course that's not what I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and first revert that. And now I'm gonna to start to actually build the feature where I want that fav icon to dynamically generate. Now to do that, we're gonna to need to write some client side code. And this probably isn't the best pattern. You can probably figure out a better way, maybe use your provider or something, but just for simplicity purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new component, favicon.tsx. I'm gonna create my fav icon. I'm going to make sure that I add my use client at the top because I'm going to need to tap into the client side uh, scripting, of course. And then I'm just going to simply return null as we're not going to actually return anything from this. I just want to tap into the ability to use the use effect hook, for instance. So speaking of, I'm going to add use effect inside here. I'm going to make sure I import this in from React. I'm also going to make sure that I'm actually adding it back to that layout file. So I'm going to import my fav icon. I'm going to just throw that into the body. And just to make sure that this is generally working, I'm going to say console log, hey. And of course, make sure that I export my default fav icon. So of course, when I refresh, as we can expect, it is working as expected. So now let's tap into the JavaScript needed to actually make that inactive. So to make this work, we're going to tap into the visibility change event, which is going to allow us to set an event listener. So anytime that that visibility has changed, we're going to be able to trigger something. And that's where we're going to hook in to actually change the content of the link tag that represents that fav icon that we're actually showing. So inside of that use effect, I'm going to say document add event listener and it's going to be that visibility change. And I'm going to go ahead and add a function, add or update fav icon, where I'm going to go ahead and add that as the callback. And I want to make sure that I always return my removal of that event listener, remove event listener, just to make sure that I'm always cleaning that up. But now whenever the update occurs or the visibility change occurs, I can now tap into that. Now that value is going to be in the document.hidden value. So if I console log out document.hidden, well, document.hidden, we can see that we don't see anything to start, but if I go ahead and navigate to another tab and then back, 
we can see that I now got that document hidden and it was originally true, but then it was false once I came back to it. So this is the mechanism we're gonna to use to update the fav icon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up constant fav icon, query or document, query selector, if I can spell, and that's going to be my link rel equals icon. And then I'm ultimately going to use this document dot hidden to define the value that I'm going to set for this fav icon. So I'm gonna say, constant path is equal to, so if it's document hidden, it's going to be one path and otherwise it's going to be another path. So if it is hidden, it's going to be fave icon inactive SVG. Otherwise it's just going to be fave icon SVG. But now I can simply say fave icon set attribute href, and that's going to be my path of course. And let's go ahead and add an optional chain here just to make sure that it exists. So let's now give this a try. If I head over to the MDN docs, we can see that it didn't quite work. What's going on here? So if we head back to the list of links, if we remember, we actually have that ICO file before we have that SVG file. So it's going to find that ICO first and it's going to try to update that, which isn't going to work for our purposes. So we need to make sure that we're targeting the right one when we're trying to look for that SVG link file. So we can use the sizes here to make sure that we're targeting the right one. So inside of this code where I'm querying my selector, I'm gonna make sure I also say sizes equals any, so now giving this another try, if I head back over to MDN, we can see that now it was updated to that gray icon. If I head back over, we can see that it was re-updated to the black one. So let's go ahead and toggle that appearance to make sure that it's working as expected. Refresh, oops, refresh the page. We can see that it was working in the background there. We can see that it has that nice white background because that's how we set up the query for the original fave icon. But if I head away, we can see that it looks inactive. And because I used a medium gray, it still looks like it's inactive for the dark mode. Now, as you can imagine, there's probably some pretty rad things that you can do for even animating a fave icon, like the CSS Tricks article, which actually uses Canvas in order to dynamically generate images and then update the fave icon based off of the local URL that it was provided after it exported that Canvas element. But don't do, go too crazy on that. You don't want to have something too distracting. You don't want to have something too resource intensive, but it's cool that we have this ability to dynamically update the fave icon. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, though, is updating the fav icon dynamically isn't going to work in all the different browsers, as all the different browsers don't want you to necessarily do that. But I'm looking at you, Safari. Even if I do make an inactive fav icon to ICO file, and we can see that it is working if I go back to Chrome, if I go over to Safari, we can see that it's still not going to work. That's even after refreshing the cache like we talked about earlier. It's just not going to respect that fav icon change after the initial one is loaded. But this is where we can kind of think about progressive enhancement, where we do have that backup of being able to provide that ICO file that's going to work in pretty much all cases, but then where we can support more dynamic changes like the dark mode and light mode themes, we can provide those capabilities like Chrome here. Now, browser quirks aside, make sure you do sign up to get exclusive access and updates to my upcoming Next.js 15 course below at spacejelly.dev slash Next.js. But uh-oh, we now have another browser quirk to deal with, cores.